create something to fear. Nell, congratulations Hi. on this film. Incredible you. job. You like disappear in this performance. Fantastic job. Um, can you talk about preparing for the role of Margaret and were there any specific um, elements from the original that you kind of wanted to, that helped influence your performance in this film? I think as Margaret's a new, completely new character, we kind of had like a fresh base to sure. play with and like a, so, to be honest, I didn't actually do any preparation. I feel like that's quite bad to say, but <laughs> I didn't. I just wanted to go in there with like like a clear head. And I think if you over practice something or you make too many choices before you even get onto set, you can kind of think yourself into a hole a little bit. Sure. So once I had her hair and her wardrobe and I was there with Kasha, it was like she kind of just appeared. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. Now, yesterday you told me that um, there was a lot of crazy things that happened on set. There's even more. I didn't even realize this somebody was attacked by a dog. Yeah. Some, oh, yeah. Ralph got bit by Ralph a dog. Ralph got bit by a dog before he got there. <gasps> I forgot about that one. He Some did. Wild stuff. But, um, now, you guys shot this on location in Rome. The setting and the atmosphere play such a crucial role in horror yeah. films. Um, how did the physical environment and sets uh, enhance your performance? Some of those sets towards the end were really quite oppressive. Like, 90% of it were actually outdoors. We're actually in Rome. We're in this orphanage. You know, it was all really authentic and real. Um, which and being outdoors in in Rome and like we shut down Piazza di Popolo and which is one of the biggest piazzas in Rome, and um, and I live right by it as well. So I was like, that's us. We shut it down. Like it was great. Um, and stepping into a Rome in the seventies is sure. is a whole nother experience. Um, it's one to tick off the bucket list for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it lends itself massively to the film as well. I mean, you know, the architecture in Rome is so iconic, and these backdrops we've seen them in so we've used them in romantic films and comedies and love films and having them as a set for a horror film it's like gives them this kind of sinister feel and really it's it's a lovely thing yeah i'm Absolutely. such a weirdo i'm like it's terrifying i love it <laughs> <laughs> now you're perfect for this role um now the original film is known for uh being very controversial for the time um and this film kind of raises the bar uh yeah. what did arkasha's directing style add to this film and how does she raise the bar in the first element she is the bar like, she is she the bar is yes the bar. she she just gave her whole soul to this film and like it made us all want to do the same like we all just followed in her footsteps like the director really sets the tone for how the shoot's going to go like from the first day like you can feel what the energy is going to be like and from day one we were all like Oh, hell yeah. Right. <laughs> You're like, hell yeah. My favorite thing about Kash is that she'll come up to you after you do like the most intensely horrific thing and she'll go, that was quite disturbing. I loved it. <laughs> Amazing. Quite lovely. Disturbing. And you're like, perfect. <laughs> you're like, yes. That's awesome. And that's, it was the best note to get from her. You knew you really like, you really went there when she'd come up and she'd go, because it was like, she loved it. She loves all the creepy stuff. Too. That's incredible. Now, uh, what did you want to bring to the role of Margaret that wasn't on the page? And what have you learned about yourself through either playing Margaret or the experience of working on the first film? And I think, you, you know, when a character's on the page, you can kind of imagine any actor doing it. Sure. You can imagine anybody doing it and bringing their own sort of colors and their own personality to the role, their own feelings towards it. Everybody's like, you know, people going back and, and reworking classic characters and like Ralph's portrayal of uh, of uh, Father, Father Brennan, Brennan yeah. is is he he like maintains that erratic energy that Patrick Troughton had at the beginning but also putting his own Ralph spin on it and having his own colors there which is such a beautiful thing to see I, I love seeing it um Margaret was brand new so obviously we had a lot of wiggle room which was nice um but yeah when she's on the page you know you're you're 2D there you sure. and then once you step into it it's like you can add all of these some different colors and feelings, and if you both agree, and like me and Kasha both seem to like it. So it's incredible. Yeah. Now, the Omen series deals with the themes of fate, destiny, and a battle between good and evil. Can you talk about I how. I remember that and steal it. Carry on. <laughs> can, you, can you talk about how these themes are expanded in the first Omen? Yeah. Um, Oh, I mean, I think the battle between good and evil is like a question that gets asked pretty much in every film. Like, it re I really do. Like, whether it's like a rom com and it's like sure. the bad guy and the new guy, or like the, do you know what I mean? It's right. like it's always kind of a theme in everything we do and watch because people need somebody to root for. It's just human nature. Like, we ha we need to have somebody to root for, and um, I think that's such a lovely part of this movie is that we have quite a clear good and evil it seems but then if you really think about it and expound on it it's like well other people who are doing the bad thing they're doing it in the name of what they think is right sure so it's like 
well, it's your opinion on what's good and what's bad. I mean, there's obviously clear lines that get crossed and clearly very bad things that happen to people. And is anything worth it if even one person has to suffer? In my opinion, sure. no, most of the time. Um, but it's all perspective. It's all what you believe to be what's right. And that's why this film asks you that question. It doesn't answer it for you. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Now, um, the original Omen in 1976 really pushed the boundaries, as I was saying earlier, for yeah. what horror was in the 70s. Um, with what was your experience with that original film uh, when you were, were researching and preparing for this role? Well, I watched the original film when I was around 11. Did you really? Yeah, big time. I used to, <laughs> I used to sneak off and watch horror films all the time. My next door neighbor had like every horror film on DVD. So I'd go over there and I'd be like, Mom, I'm just going across the road. And I'd just go and watch like wildly inappropriate films for my age range. <laughs> um, which I think has lent itself probably into how my career's turned out. But. Um, <laughs> But I had such a visceral reaction to the original Omen, because, partially because I was 11, but also because it does that to people, right. you know? And when I came back and, re I'd, I'd seen it multiple times since, but when I came back and revisited it before coming out to, to play Margaret in Rome, um, it was more just from the basis that I was getting excited. And I was just really excited to kind of be a part of this world. And I wanted to go back and watch this movie that I already loved and remember what I was getting myself into. That is today. wild. I, you know, there's this mystique around this movie. And, yeah. and, and it, it, I guess it was there with you guys on set. It was with me yesterday on the red carpet as well. I what feel like happened? after when I was doing my outro, a crow came down and like almost attacked me. Oh my God, that's Legit. brilliant. So, oh, not that you almost got attacked. That's I mean, good. it was pretty cool for, for, for the visual. Good for a shot. Was, Did you get it? We got the shot. Oh, the shot was so great. Good. But yesterday you were telling me about some crazy experiences that happened on set, yeah. from crucifixions breaking to a murder of crow attacking people. Yes. Can you uh, expand on, a, on some of those stories a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Ralph's daughter was a, about to fly out and, and, and visit Ralph, and she had a part in the movie. And just before she came, she was attacked by a murder of crows. She was just walking her dog, and a murder of crows came and scratched her up in her hair and everything, and then she was about to fly. And then my plane got hit by lightning, and so did somebody else's. The first day I met Ralph, he had been known that was a different time, but he, Ralph got bitten by a dog like quite while we were shooting. Everyone was like, where's Ralph? He's, he's gone to the hospital to get this dog bite checked out. And Ralph loves animals, is amazing around them, has never had an issue with one in his life. And so he was like, what is going on? And these things, like a plethora, and I'm sure there's a, like a cacophony more, but like, it was really, it was, but we're all such weirdos and we all are so into the genre. Me and Ralph especially, and Karsha, like when something weird would happen, we would get so excited. We we're like, yes, we're doing something right. We're doing uh, something right if we're... You guys kind of manifested it. We kind of manifested it. I love it. it. Yeah. Now, the last question I have for you is that uh, this film is absolutely incredible. Thank but you. But why is this a must-see for horror enthusiasts? I think if you are a horror enthusiast, then you probably love the original Omen. I mean, it's quite a hard one to miss. Sure. And it's quite a hard one not to love, in my opinion. And if you love the original Omen, then hopefully you'll like this because we're just giving you more of it, you know, in, in our way, in our sort of modernized way. And um, yeah, it's, the, the original Omen's just a fantastic story. It really is. And what better way to spend your time than to expand on a fantastic story that you already know and love. And it also would be a nice entry point to fans who maybe haven't been a part of the, of, of the original Omen and maybe haven't seen it. Sure. And maybe watching this film could then spur them on to go and like re-enter the franchise and, and reawaken this like sleeping giant of horror. I, I totally agree. Look, I think this is the perfect prequel, but it's also such a great standalone movie that you can just enjoy it on its own. It works that way, But yeah. Um, yeah, fantastic job. You Thank disappear you. into the role. Man, you're incredible. Thank you so much <laughs> no, for your time. I appreciate you. you. I'm gonna like, cry. No, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you.